well. Next, I would like to go ahead and we're going to start with the gubernatorial candidates. We have seven great candidates for governor. I am so proud to be able to announce to you these seven great people, and we are going to start out with Mr. Ross Wilbur. Secretary of State that will make sure that Iowans get to vote and exercise that right by taking a real election vote. So my name is Ross Wilburn and I've been living here in Ames for the past three years. I was in Iowa City for a little over 30 years before that. And I went to junior high and high school in Davenport, class of 82, 1982. If you're wondering how old I am, I'll let you do the math. So I work for Iowa State University Extension and Outreach, and I'm the diversity officer, so I train our staff in all 99 counties on how to work with people of a different cultural background, of their, their own, whatever that difference is. I also am the associate director of our community and economic development group, so think city county planning, we do that in all 99 counties. I'm a former mayor of Iowa City and 12-year city council member. I was the diversity officer for the Iowa City Community School District. I'm a former social worker, and so I worked with youth and families on getting over, working through, coping with mental health issues, and so that the young people can grow up to be contributing members of society and enjoy life in our community. I'm a former member of the Iowa Army National Guard, and my brother served in Desert Storm, so I know what it's like to have family members who are, are struggling while their loved ones are away, and the support that they need in communities when they come back home and need those supports in place. So I've been traveling around the state, and as I've listened to Iowans, they are saying that they want a healthier Iowa, they want a more inclusive Iowa, and they want a more prosperous Iowa. And I want to draw upon all my experiences to work with you to help us become the state we know we can be, with better opportunities economically, with healthcare education, and to lead the nation in quality of life. Our campaign motto is, let's be Iowa, and that means take actions that are going to improve the lives of Iowans every day. You know, President 45 has been putting out a lot of distraction to try and get us away from those core things. Talking about whether you should stand or kneel, get, getting to patriotism. Don't let them claim patriotism. We're pretty strong patriots here in the Democratic Party. We support services for individuals and families coping with mental health. Not closing down mental health centers so that they're not getting those supports. We stand for strong education. Teachers shouldn't have to pull money out of their pockets to pay to educate our children. We understand that health care is a right, and we need to push for that health care for all, and that is the Iowa way. Pre-existing conditions shouldn't be something that excludes us from receiving that health care. We know and we stand that you have the right as workers to organize, to collectively bargain, and make sure that we have a strong middle class. I want to close with saying this. We can't give in to fear and hate. We cannot do that. It's important to recognize the importance of diversity and inclusion, but we've got to choose a better path to hate and get Iowa's to choose a better half, ha, uh, path than hate. My name is Ross Wilburn. I'm running governor because we can do better. We can be better. Let's be Iowa. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ross Wilburn. I wanted to introduce a couple of people who just was able to join us. They are local candidates. I want to introduce in the back corner over here, Victoria Shropinski, who is running for Ames Mayor. Hi, Victoria. I would also like to introduce to you David Martin, who is running for City Council for Ward 3 here in Ames. Do I have to remind everybody to vote on November 7th? No. Well, maybe I should. 
Vote November 7th. Thank you very much. Next on our list, I am proud to present to you Mr. John Niederbach.
from Waterloo originally. I'm from a family of eight. My dad was a World War II veteran, came home, started a construction machinery business. My mom stayed home with us. And what I remember the most, and I've talked to a lot of you about this, is caring about others. You know, I remember about if someone was sick, you know, neighbor was sick, we went over and helped, and somebody in your community was down, you know, kind of arrow got around them and helped them get up. That's why I became a medical doctor, because I could see the power of caring for others. The power of, of, especially when they were sick or injured. And folks, I've been all over all 99 counties, and I'm not seeing that as much anymore. I'm seeing that people can't get ahead for their families, and they're not getting a fair shake. And they honestly feel like the Branstead Reynolds administration has put profits ahead of people. Do you feel that way? Well, I want to change that. I want to be a governor that cares about people. I've been caring about people my whole life as a doctor, and I care that every Iowan, and I mean every Iowan, is successful. You know, I've been talking to people about health care, and as a doctor, you know health care is a right, not a privilege. about this Medicaid privatization, or I call it Medicaid mess. You know, we put 600,000 of our most vulnerable citizens so that they have not got access to health care. Talk to a mom, she has a child with disabilities. She has to drive an hour and a half to get her child health care. That's not caring about every island. And as your governor, I will make sure we have access to health care for every mother and every citizen in Iowa. mental health and substance abuse and addiction. We all know somebody who's suffering, yet we're 50th in mental health beds, 47th in mental health providers, and honestly we've turned our law enforcement officers into our first line mental health providers, and God bless them, but they take people to jail or to the emergency room, two of the most expensive and worst places for somebody in crisis. before people are in crisis. Does that sound like an idea? As your governor, I will make sure there are mental health resources in every community so that we can take care of our citizens. We need to do that. I talked to some of the 15,000 women who no longer have their Planned Parenthood uh, clinics because we've defunded Planned Parenthood. And as a mother, of five daughters, as a doctor and as a woman, I will restore Planned Parenthood funding the very first day. I've talked to people and taught parents about education. And I mean education from early childhood to K through 12 to our region's universities. You know folks, there are, there are parents who their kids don't have enough books to bring home homework at night. We used to be a beacon for education. We used to be the best at this. We need to make sure that our teachers have the resources they need and the respect they deserve to teach our kids. And I will make sure as your governor that every child in every zip code has quality public education. Do you agree with me? <laughs> People ask me why I'm running for governor. And it's a tough job and I applaud anyone, all these elected officials we have, I applaud anyone who gets in the arena. But I gotta tell you, I have seven kids and one grandchild. And the reason I'm running is because I want them to be able to stay in Iowa and be successful in Iowa. I want your kids and your grandkids to be able to stay in Iowa and be successful in Iowa. I see an Iowa where they have great jobs with great benefits. They have clean water and clean air. They have great education. They have wonderful health care. This is the place we can be. Join my team, McGuireForGovernor.com. I would love to have you. Thank you so much. Andy Holden McGuire, everyone. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Mr. John Norris. Hey, thank, you. thank you very much. Great to see so many great friends here in Story County and throughout the area. Um, I want to. Uh, this is a. I, I got here a little late to meet some of you on the way in because this little guy here. Uh, is playing in his sixth football game of the year right now. I went to the first five, which they lost, and I just got a text from Jackie over there that they're ahead 14 nothing. So I'm going to miss Sam's first victory this year. Um, but if you 
give you a chance on the way out. These are out there. This will give you a little bit of my background since we don't have a lot of time to go through our, our bios here today. Uh, please take a look at that and grab one on your way out. Uh, this is my crew. This is why I'm fighting for the families of Iowa. Because uh, I've been blessed. My children have been blessed from our service, my jockeys and my service in the Obama administration, and my service at the United Nations. Uh, they've seen a lot throughout the world, and they now ask questions that I don't have answers for about Iowa and our country and the direction we're going. This election is about those answers. This election is about contesting for power. Contesting for power against the wealthy special interests and corporate lobbyists to control our government today. Yeah, yeah this is what I'm It's about restoring people, people's faith in our democracy and our government for a government that works for the people, not the special interest. I think of the words of Hubert Humphrey. Moral objective of a government is to look out for those in the dawn of life, our children. What are we doing for our children today? We're denying climate change. Now we're denying a water crisis in Iowa. We should be doubling the funding for the Leopold Center, not eliminating the funding. Yeah. Chasing away teachers from this state by stripping away their collective bargaining rights and particularly harmful for our rural schools. We're, we're promoting, we've got a government now, a government now that's promoting private education. Public education has been the bedrock of Iowa and our society. We should be doing everything we can to give our teachers and our schools the tools they need to meet the challenges of today's education system. not protecting those in the dawn of life in our state today because of the leadership of this government and their priorities, which are to give handouts and corporate welfare to the folks who don't need help at the expense of our children. The morality of the government is to look out for those in the twilight of life. What are we doing in this state for our seniors and older Iowans? one of the most aging populations in the country, and we cut funding for our area agencies on aging. We have a resource in all of our older Iowans, and we're neglecting them, and we're denying them to be a better and more productive part of our communities. We ground the long-term care ombudsman. It's supposed to inspect nursing homes and elder abuse. We're denying that moral responsibility. And the third piece of that, those in the shadows of life. The needy, the sick, the disabled. When we privatize Medicaid and take away the opportunity for health care for Iowans, that is, a, is against our moral responsibility as a government. We've got governors and this legislature today who are dropping the ball. They're offending me and what I feel our government should do, and I think they offend you too. We have got to take back the state. We've got to take back our state government as one that fights for people, says no to corporate welfare and special interests, and makes our state one that my children and your children can look forward to a future in. Thank you. Thank you very much, John Lawrence. Next up, I would like to introduce to you Kathy Glosson. Central Iowa Democrats. I said, how you doing, Central Iowa Democrats? That's more like it. Uh, my name is Kathy Glosson, uh, and I'm an intensive care unit nurse from working over 20 years uh, at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. And as a frontline, thank you for nurses in the room and healthcare providers. Uh, as a frontline caregiver and nurse, uh, I led the effort uh, over 18 years ago with my fellow nurses and healthcare professionals at the university hospitals 
to organize our union. I'm proud of that. I then went on to help organize three other hospitals in the state of Iowa to help those nurses and healthcare workers gain a voice on the job to improve their lives and their families' lives. And I haven't stopped organizing since. But let me cut to the chase today because we only have three minutes. The number one job of a governor is to raise wages and improve the standard of living for all Iowans. And let's face it, folks, Governor Kim Reynolds isn't getting the job done. Let's look at the facts. One third of every household in this state can't pay their bills each month. One out of every three households. And that's because two thirds of the jobs in our state pay less than $20 an hour. And half of those pay less than $15 an hour. You know, that's the Governor, Governor Kim Reynolds record, and that's the real Iowa economy that we're facing. They talk about low unemployment rate in our state. Well, that may be true, but the misery index for families in our state is high. You know, I've been traveling the state the last six months talking to Iowans, whether it's from Dubuque to Keokuk, Spencer, my hometown, Moravia. And what I've been listening and hearing folks talk about is how they feel ignored and left behind, left behind by a rigged economy that hasn't worked for them and their family for decades. They feel cheated by politicians who are bought and paid for by big corporations and CEOs. And, and they're hurt by a healthcare system that cares too little, costs too much, and puts profits over people every single time. You know, the Iowans I've been listening to are fed up. They're tired of working two and three jobs to pay their bills and put food on the table and gas in the car. But you know what they tell me? Even though they're tired of working two and three jobs, they're ready to rise up. They're ready to rise up for increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And it, kick, it would kick in over three years and be indexed to inflation moving forward. They're also ready to rise up for strong union rights in this state. Not just... changes to the collective bargaining bill is a good start, but it's not enough. The role of the governor should make it easier for workers to join together in a union or employee association. Workers are, and folks around the state are also ready to rise up for single-payer universal <laughs> health care. We'd like to have Medicare for all. But if we can't count on the folks in D.C. to get that job, Iowa absolutely can lead on universal single-payer health care for every Iowa, everybody in, nobody left behind. And then they also want to rise up for clean water. We, we need to hold corporations accountable when they pollute our waterways, streams, rivers, and lakes. Clean water should be the birthright for every single Iowan. They're also ready to rise up to fund public education in our state and make college affordable for Iowa students. We can't win. We cannot win in 2018 if what we offer voters are watered down, centrist, middle of the road candidates and ideas. My name may be on the ballot, my name may be on the ballot, but this is not about me. This is about each of you. It's about each of you. So, if you're ready to rise up for a bold, progressive Iowa, join our movement. I'm Kathy Gloss, and that's why I'm running for governor. Let's rise up together in 2018 and take back our state. Thank you so much. Thank you, Central Iowa Democrats. Thank you very much. Next up, I would like to have the privilege of introducing to you Mr. Fred Hubble. Fred. Good afternoon, 
everybody. Jan Bauer, great job you did today getting all these people out here. You got all these Democrats excited. You've done a wonderful job coming out here, Jan. You deserve a lot of support. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Fred Holm. I've been a lifelong progressive Democrat. And I say progressive because my wife and I have been working for the better part of our lives right here in Iowa on many progressive issues. Let's talk about health care. Several years ago, Broadmont's Hospital came to my wife and I and said, we need more beds for mental health and we need more doctors. We stepped up and we helped them get that. They're just opening up more space now with more doctors and more beds. That's what leaders do. They actually go out and get things done. They organize people to make, get results for folks. We also worked very hard for Planned Parenthood for many, many years. I was on the board for eight years. I chaired the board for eight years. When they came to us and said, we can't get into Dubuque, nobody will rent or, leave or sell us a building, we bought them a building. Turned around and gave it back to Planned Parenthood so they could get into Dubuque. That's all, that's, that's all about making things happen for people, getting things done. In the environment, my wife and I were the biggest supporters and one of the biggest volunteers for the National Outdoor Re uh, uh, Trust Fund in 2010 that was on the ballot and got approved by voters. That's the vehicle for having long-term, sustainable, permanent funding for water quality in Iowa. I've been talking to legislators ever since. They all say it needs to happen, just not now. That's not acceptable. We need to get permanent funding for water quality and soil preservation today. In the area of education, my wife and I have spent considerable time putting together scholarships for kids who can't afford to go to college but deserve to go to college. We provided scholarships to many of those kids. When I ran Yonkers in the 1980s, we put together farm aid scholarships and the farm aid concerts to help the farmers who were struggling with the debt crisis in the 1980s. They couldn't afford for their kids to go to school. They couldn't afford to stay in their farms. We created scholarships for them and we created concerts to raise money to help those farmers stay in their farms. That's what leaders do. So I work with, in the meantime, what do you see? You see Reynolds and her Republican friends systematically destroying everything that makes this state a great place to live. Everything you and I, my family, your families, have been working for for the last 30 or 40 years has been systematically undercut by this governor. I can't sit back and just let it continue. I'm running for governor because I am fed up and we need to change this. We need to change it with a leader who wants to unify people. We can't just fight all the time. We've got to find common ground to get things done, like we did with Broadlines, like we did with Planned Parenthood, getting the Dubuque, the Dubuque store open, the clinic open. We need to work together. Whoever wants to advance our agenda, of a progressive agenda, to make Iowa a better place to live, raise a family, and grow your business, we need to work with them. Because that's how you get progress. That's how you get things done. We can't just fight all the time. We got to find some common ground and work together. And we got to do it by putting heart first. You got to lead with your heart. And that means investing in Iowans. Investing in Iowans so they have the respect from our government and from their fellow Iowans. Investing in Iowans so they have an opportunity to pursue the education or the job training with the community colleges that they need. Investing in Iowans so they have the the opportunity to have good quality health care affordable to them all across the state wherever they live. If we, thank you, if we invested, if, if instead of sending money to Apple, Microsoft, and Google outside of Iowa, if we invested in high speed internet in every corner of the state, every business, every family, we could grow our economy from, from all corners of this state. People could work where they live. They wouldn't have to move to Ames or Iowa City or Denver or Des Moines or, or Cedar Rapids. They could live at home. They could work at home. That's a much better investment than Apple was, ladies and gentlemen. That's the kind of government we need. Somebody who knows how to invest the state's money properly so we can, so we can help people we can help businesses, and we can help families grow and be successful in our state. That's what I want to do for Iowa. That's what I've been doing for 30, 40 years in this state, for state government, as well as for private enterprise, and for dozens of nonprofit institutions. I want to help do it for the rest of Iowa. Thank you very much.
and elbow, everyone. Thank you very much, Fred. And we're down to our last speaker for today, Senator Nate Bolton. Today, I, I ran my 39th marathon uh, in Des Moines today. Uh, last year, thank you. Last year, I celebrated by going out and knocking doors for Steve Sodders and, and Tama. And this year, I get to spend it with you guys. So I really appreciate you, you inviting me up here. Uh, I will tell you from, from my experience, my, uh, my Des Moines marathon that I ran seven years ago when I was 31 was a lot easier than the one that I ran at 37 today. <laughs> Uh, my name is Nate Bolton, and I'm proud to be the state senator who represents East Des Moines and Pleasant Hill in the Iowa Senate. But I want to tell you, I'm running for governor because I truly believe that Iowa deserves a brighter future, and working families in this state deserve a governor who actually has their back. That's what needs to happen in this state again. We've done it before, and we need to start talking about the real Iowans across our state who need an advocate in the governor's office. Some of you may have heard, I grew up in Columbus Junction. It's a small town in southeast Iowa where I was uh, proud to grow up in a union family. I'm proud of that community because it is a diverse community that has succeeded by coming together. And like many of our, our communities across the state, it's also a community that is struggling right now under this administration's economy. Here's the, here's the true, true story. This administration has undercut our success in Iowa. They have spent the last seven years underfunding our schools. They've gutted collective bargaining right for rights for those who answer the sacred call of public service. They've cut workers' compensation benefits for the workers who put their bodies on the line for economic prosperity in our state. They've defunded Planned Parenthood. Kim Reynolds, by the way, is just adding insult to injury now. She's the one who cut overtime pay for overtime work for 2,800 Iowa employees and then said it's just a small impact. Well, not to those workers or their families. She told the LBGTQ community that their rights are an issue of local control, despite the dark and disturbing history our nation has when civil rights are turned over to local governments. She says that their irresponsible budget cuts haven't affected services, but they've cut whole programs. They completely defunded the Leopold Center. It's painfully apparent. Kim Reynolds either doesn't understand or just doesn't care about the damage that they are doing. Well, we are standing ready to forge a new path in this state, a path forward for a brighter future in Iowa. I've now traveled to 53 Iowa counties, and I've heard from people. I've heard from a corrections officer in southeast Iowa, who's worried about the safety of his brothers and sisters that go to work every day in an understaffed facility where they work more and more overtime, where they only had four correctional officers able to respond to a riot involving 100 inmates this year. I've heard from a pediatrician who wrote a prescription to a little girl, but because of the privatized Medicaid system and the delays in the reimbursement process, that little girl couldn't get that prescription filled in time and ended up going unnecessarily to the emergency room. I spoke with a man whose brother was in Clorinda's mental health facility when it was shut down. His brother died within three weeks of that facility closing because there was nowhere for him to go. Iowa is better than this, and Iowans are better than this. I was proud to be in the Iowa Senate fighting this agenda every step of the way. And by the way, thank you for sending us Herman Kornbach from Story County, who's done a great job for you here. Thank you, Herman. I'm proud to have Herman's support for governor as well as the support of 22 legislators. But more than that, I'm proud to have been a part of rallies at the Capitol and forums across the state where thousands of you showed up, hundreds of those individual forums across our state, making sure they answer for the things that they've done. We can offer a brighter future forward if we stand together, if we realize Iowa's full potential in the 2018 election. I say it every time I give a speech. This is a fight for the soul of our state. We will determine Iowa's long-term future with this election. And we can't be satisfied with just talking about the tough fights that, yes, did define us this last election, but offering that vision forward, not for the next 
20 months, but for the next 20 years. Think about what Iowa looks like if we fully fund education again and treat teachers like professionals as they are. If we're able to recruit the next generation of quality teachers into our classroom. If we get back to valuing our workforce in this economy, making our economy successful, not with corporate coupons, but with offering the most skilled, educated, productive workforce in the world. That's our strength in Iowa. Answering the real problem of climate change with Iowa built solar panels and wind turbines, making sure we clean up our waterways in this state and protect and promote our natural resources, the work my wife Andrea has done for her career that I'm so proud to be a part of as well. Those are the things that face us in this election. We are going to determine the long term future of our state as we go to vote in 2018. The tough tights, fights define us, but in 2018, we face the most important fight. Yet, we faced recertification elections and we've shown that the labor movement is ready to come back. We had school board elections and shown that people who care about our schools can and will get elected to office. We elected Phil Miller in a district that Donald Trump carried by 20%. Our party is ready to win this election. Stand with me. Let's stand together. Let's fight for the soul of our state and win that fight. Thank you. It's her word.